Namaskar. I am Tufail Ahmed, Global President of Poetry and Literary Group, ELG, once again with you with a new episode of Poetry and Literary Event. And this week we have a special event celebrating the legend, one of the most legendary poet, John Keats. Ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate our legend to understand what our legends were, what they wrote, how they wrote. And when we study them and when we talk about them, we learn. And that learning, we all are poets here, most of them, or most of us, or rather all of us. And that learning help us to shape ourselves. One of the basic motto of PLG is, or the tagline of PLG is, connecting people with literature. And I believe the most important program or the most uh, fulfilling program for this mission is, this program celebrating the legend, which we celebrate alternately every month, an Urdu or Hindi and an English poet. And this month is the turn of the English poet John Cates, who was 18th century poet or 19th century poet, 1795 to 1821. Only 26 years he lived and he wrote some of the most read poems and most um, romantic poems of the world I've ever seen. Keats. Keats, along with Shelley and Byron, are considered to be the second generation of romantic poets. Although he lived only 25 years, but he wrote immortal poets, poems. He was the victim of tuberculosis, a very dangerous disease at, at those time and uh, which was considered to be non-curable. Tuberculosis could kill kids, but he couldn't, the tuberculosis could not kill the poems which he wrote and that has become immortal and that will remain immortal throughout the history, throughout, uh, when, uh, till when the world exists. I will not talk much about Keats because I leave this for our anchor to talk about. And we have 
our chief guest, Dr. Mujtaba Ahmad from Al Mintab University, the College of Science and Arts, Saudi Arabia. We are thankful to Dr. Mushtaba Ahmad for taking his time out and joining us here in this program. And I'm sure he will give us an insight about John Keats also. So I refrain from talking on John Keats and go straight away to our anchor of the day, Dr. Zweb, Mr. Zweb Dalal, who is here with us. Over to you, Mr. Dalal. Please, the evening is yours and, and please take us through this memorable night when we will talk about some of the most romantic poems the world has ever seen or listened in this night. Over to you, Doctor, uh, to Mr. Zweb Dilan. You can unmute yourself. All of you can unmute yourself. The unmute button has been enabled. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Zweb Dalal, your mic is muted. Can you unmute yourself? No, you have not been able to unmute. Mr. Zweb, please unmute yourself. There's a button on the bottom left corner, mute and unmute. Can you unmute yourself, Mr. Zweb? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Your time, your time, your time. Yes, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dear friends, poets, poetesses, and the unseen audience. We are once again here under PLG 82 to celebrate an English poet, John Keats. But before we start, I take this opportunity to welcome our guest, guest of honor, Mr. Mustafa Ahmad, Professor, Department of English, College of Arts and Science, Saudi Arabia. We request Mr. Mustafa Ahmad to speak to us on various aspects of English language, particularly poet John Keats. Over to you, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Zweb, uh, I think uh, we will ask the keynote address in the end. So uh, I would request, I would rather, uh, you know, uh, modify a little bit that uh, Dr. Mustafa can say just few words now and later on in the end, he can give the keynote address and about uh, his, uh, you know, impression about the program, how he liked and what are the things uh, he would suggest us to improve and things like that, that he can say. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know about it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Over yeah. to you, Dr. Mushtaba. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Actually, yeah. we are lucky to be born in an age about which very recently, one Pakistani humorous writer noted that nowadays, ordinary poets or literarians have stopped to come in this world. Most of the poets or the literarian who are born nowadays, they have the international, what you call a stature. In our time, 30 to 40 years before, when I was studying in college, it was very difficult to organize a district level or a state level program. But now every poet, every literature claims to have an international stature. That's why in this age, where there is no one ordinary, we are going to discuss about the poet who is <clears throat> among the greatest of the world. So I'm thankful to all of you to <clears throat> organize such a program of paramount effect. Actually, the keynote that is supposed to be addressed in the last, but uh, well done is, uh, well begun is half done. I would just say that one of the most important thing or the keynote 
that was given to the world by John Keats was the conception of beauty. And uh, in our uh, mashaf, in the Islamic belief in Quran, it is written, Allahu Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal. Our Allah Almighty, He likes beauty and He is beautiful. So that's why where there is beauty, where there is beauty, there is Keat. Either it is in India or in Mashkat or in Oman or everywhere in the world. But nowadays, this is the age of disease. And it is our character, our endeavor, our cooperation, our courage that will drive the ugliness that has engulfed the world. And that action in beauty would lead us to a new morning. I welcome, I hope that all of you are going to do something very positively with a positive brain to welcome or to discuss the different aspects of poem, poets, poetry, and the current, the current scenario, the need that was, the lead that was given by John Keats. It would be very interesting to note that he died very young, but still we are going to remember that greatest poet on the world in one sense or the other. So thank you all of you for giving me this honor, inshallah, it would be interesting to listen from our reverend guest or all of us who have joined us. I am with you. I welcome you. That's all. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, dear friends, participants, I went through the education levels of each speaker. And I felt like I'm still a fourth grader. <laughs> At Antonio D'Souza High in Mumbai, in my knickers, to have to learn more. My first brush with English language was this. To my teacher, I, sir, can I go to the restroom? Teacher, Zoeb, you can go, but you may not. So that is the first lesson of grammar I learned in school. So all participants are required to have five to six minutes for only one poem. Let us start the fun. First of all, we we'll, uh, invite a very small doll, as I call her, Alia Safir. And she's going to recite her, pro, her poem. Alia, you can start your poem now. Good Alia, evening just... and greetings to everyone in this wonderful gathering. I am Alia, studying in grade one ISWKR. I'm proud to join you in remembering the legendary poet John Keats. Thank you, PLG, and the Fail Uncle for this opportunity. We all know John Keats is one of the greatest English romantic poets. Let me share a fun fact about Keats. He was so lazy and would often sleep in until 10 a.m. He enjoyed it so much, he even wrote a poem about this habit titled Ode on Indolence. The poem that I just recite today in his remembrance is I had a dove, and the sweet dove died. The main idea of this poem is the loss of a loved person's peace. This person could be someone dear to him. He speaks about something that is thick and he can't keep near him against his own fishes. I had a dove, and the sweet dove died. Here we go. I had a dove in the sweet of dove by John Keats. I had a dove in the sweet of dove. I had a dove and the sweet of dove. And I thought it died of grieving. Oh, what could it grieve for? Oh, what could it grieve for? Its feet were, its feet were tied with a silken thread my own hands weaving. Sweet little red feet, why would you die? Sweet little red feet, 
Why did I? Why would you leave me, sweet bird? Why? Why would you leave me, sweet bird? Why? You lived alone in the forest tree. Why did you think? Could you not live with me? Why did you think? Could you not live with me? I kissed you off and gave you what peace. Why not live sweetly as in the green trees? Why not be sweetly as in the green trees? Why not be sweetly as in the green trees? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are very wonderful. Uh, now the next person I invite is Arunima. Arunima, where are you? She's not no, on no, the screen. No. Hello. So, Felji, Arunima is not there. Anurima, Anurima is not there, so you can take the next. Yeah, the next one is uh, Likita Kauru. Likita. She is known. Yes, she is she's known there. by her. She is she's known by. Mm -hmm. She is known by her pet name, Liki Doll. At the age of ten, she started writing when the when she attended the first Mushaira. She has published uncased reflections every year in school magazine. She has participated in many and got citation from Indian school Muscat. She is a 12th standard student born in Tripati and she lives in Nizwa. So beside your poem, Likita. Hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Zawaib sir. Thank you so very much for the introduction, sir. Thank you so very much. And I think I've joined another meet after a really, really long time. And the wait, I mean, the wait felt more like an eternity. And I'm feeling very much better now that I've gotten an opportunity today. And without any delay, I would like to get started. The legend of today, uh, John Keats. I have seen that many of you have been very curious about John Keats and they've started researching about them and I think they've taken a lot of his works and the thing that I wanted to show today was something that needs a little more light, that needs a little more attention among all of us, hardships. We, uh, If we actually look into his life, we see that John's parents, he wanted to send them to a very good school, but the family was not having enough money. They couldn't afford the fees. And at that time, John was just eight. His father, he died from a skull fracture and that was a loss. His mother also passed away due to tu tuberculosis and that was another loss. And all this happened when he was a very young child back when his father was alive, he was working as a hostler at the stable. So he didn't have a lot of money. And Keats's education was ruined, his life. It always had a dark mark on his life throughout his childhood and more like it was interrupted. He never had fun like how other kids used to. This basically shows us that having hardships growing up Keats could have given up, given up on anything or everything. But had he done that, we wouldn't be celebrating him as a legend right now. So I would like to recite a poem that I've written on how his bravado has saved him right now. Presenting you, Cherry Blossoms. Tinting the outlines of grayish clouds Wondering if the sun portrayed a plethora of pleasure. Dew slipping off the slender curves of a grass blade. The day is sky kissed by the seamless outlines of, this, of the land that smudged in solitude. He realized his heart will remain young, elated in screaming colors. Spine. Touch the sky and fist grab the air. 
emotions tumbled and pranced around the corners of paper and ink. Tears found their abode beneath tender words. Smiles found their ab abode beneath his embraces. And all that he knew was darkness. Wings are torn as he dunk deeper into the ocean. Not a loved one in sight, but just one look at the sky. He sewed his wings to be soaring back in the sky again. He soared higher than ever. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice, Nikita. Thank you, sir. It was nice. Thank you. Very nicely you said. Very nicely done. I'll Very go nice. back again. I'll go back again Thank to you. Arun Ima. Very nice. I'll go back to Arun Ima if she's around. She's not. Uh, uh, Zweb Sahab, uh, you can carry on. And if uh, once okay. she comes, I will inform you. Okay, okay. Now carry okay. on. Uh, we, call, we call in Pramila Krishnan. When I looked her, I looked her, her uh, write up, I was amazed. An academician worked in reputed colleges in Bangalore, India, and Majan University in Mustak in the Faculty of English uh, Language Studies. Being a student of English literature, poetry always a great interest. Her, she started in composing short poems in the school days. Her published poems in many international magazines. Her dream project of publishing poems became fruitful during the pandemic. Authored a book, Poems, Soaring Streaks, in August of 1920. As a motivational speaker, had the opportunity to be a motivational speaker in the biggest platform, Avenue 2020, held by the Indian Oman School. So again, Pramila ji, where are you? I'm here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm just Thanks waiting to hear you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the wonderful <laughs> introduction. I'm humbled. <laughs> Being a poetess, um, uh, I love nature. And John Keats is always a favorite because he is an English, a romantic English poet of the uh, early um, 19th century. His poems describing nature are of a different level. I This takes me down to the days when I was working uh, as a lecturer, as a uh, English uh, professor, Bangalore, uh, you know, teaching this these poems. Today, when I was looking at these poems to recite, you know, it took me down to my lovely, beautiful days. Now, I would like to start with a thing of beauty is a joy forever by John Keats, where John Keats describes beauty. But where lies the beauty? Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder for sure. But much of it, the beholder's eyes are fixed and focused and grabs the mesmerizing nature. And this beautiful nature is wonderfully expressed by John Keats as a romantic poet. Although as Likita said, um, John Keats had a very short life, you know, God had given him a short life, but that was full of sweetness, memories for us to remember now and forever. Although he lived just for 25 years, he has made a very produ productive, um, you know, niche in the English literary uh, field. Um, when you think of the poems, many odes are written by him, like O to Nightingale, where he describes a nightingale and then says it is like a pint of opium that I've taken in and all that. And then O to Gracianans, O to Mel Melancholy, many of his odes are there, which are very lengthy and it takes a long, you know, time. I mean, it's, it's a very lengthy uh, the version of the poems. Coming to the sonnets, which I've chosen today, he has taken up the um, Petrarchan style of writing, which is, um, it has an octave and a sestet. That is eight, uh, eight lines is the octave. And then we have the other six lines, sestet, or 14, uh, making it a sonnet of 14 lines. 
here's a poem that I would like to um, talk about. I'm not taking uh, much of my time to describe and explain about it. I thought I would. I hope it's okay. Is it okay, sir, Zohar? Mr. Zohar, yes. is it okay? Sir? Yes. No, no, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You all can hear you. Thank you. So this is how his poems are written. So, well, now I would like to talk about the sonnet to the Nile, describing, glorifying the beautiful river Nile. And he also has a question uh, in, in between beautifully inbuilt to say and ask about Nile. And then finally, he comes to terms and says, of course, the Nile has, he praises the beauty of Nile and then explains how beautifully it flows and joins the sea to make it um, uh, from a flowing lane to that of a mass. You know, that's exactly how we have to um, accept life. What we are from our, our contribution to the world is very important. Like a nine, we have to start and give it to the mass, the world, our contribution before uh, we go away because our life is a gift of uh, God. So here goes our poem. Uh, so, uh, some of the old moon mountains African, chief of the pyramid and crocodile, we call thee fruitful and that very wild. A desert fills our seeing's inward span, nurse of swath nation since the world began. Art thou so fruitful or dost thou begin? Such men to honor thee who war with toy. Rest for a space twixt Cairo and Deccan. Here, twixt is between Cairo and Deccan. Oh, may dark fancies err, they surely do. It's ignorance that makes a barren waste of all beyond itself. Thou dost bid you green rushes like our rivers and dust stays. The pleasant sunrise green eyes has thou too, and to see as happily does haste. Uh, haste. So this is all. It's a short poem of 14 lines, but what is, what is the beauty of this poem is the rhyme scheme that he has adap adopted. You know, it has that A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A for the first eight, and the last eight is C D C D C D. A poem has gives a um, you know a sound a rhythm only with this rhyme scheme, and so beautifully he has put in this to make it a wonderful poem. The last line of African, um, you know, African uh, span crocodile and wild in the last began um, a toil by beguile Deccan. You know, beautifully rhyming words of A B B A A B B A, and then C D C D C D. Now, this is the joy of the poem and when, I mean, I'm extremely sorry that I'm, I don't think so. I sound very beautiful in my voice to make it musical. Otherwise, these poems are nice. Uh, I, I think uh, the a poem, The Daisy of John Keats is another wonderful poem which, which is sung as well. So his poems are wonderful and uh, it, it just describes the beauty of nature. Well, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. I yeah. hope I've not taken much of your time. And no. a, a hello and a hi to everybody around the world watching me. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Thank your you choice so of uh, so nice your choice. You Thank you to Phil, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zerd, sir. Thank you much. Uh, your, your choice of Nile is very nice in the sense the Nile is uh, mentioned in the biblical stories and exactly. also the Quranic stories. And the Nile was ruled by pharaohs for almost 6,000 years till yeah. Moses destroyed them. So yes. it's a very it's a very interesting uh, uh, river. And thank you so exactly. much for it. So, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, can we, uh, now, everybody hold out your breath. We'll call uh, Shere Banuji, where is she? Sherebanu, where are you? Sherebanu ji, connection has been lost, so you can carry on. Next poet. Uh, now we take up the, uh, the gentleman. The first one uh, is uh, 
Narendra Kumar ji. I talked to him on the phone. He was very sweet with his talk. He passed his MA in 1971 and is retired from government. He, after retirement, he starts lecturer. He, is, he, is, he stopped doing lecturing in 2002, you know, enjoying yoga, composing Hindi, English poems, and Punjabi, composing Hindi lyrics, bhajans. And he, he told me how old he is. But I said, age is just a number. And he sees beauty in everything. That's the reason he has chosen Things of Beauty by Keats. Narendra Ji. Oh. You are mute. Narendra Ji, you are mute. Narendra Ji, no? can you? Yeah, now you can. We can hear. Okay, I, I told you last time that we are very much poor in this technicalities. Because, because of that uh, tremendous change in the era. <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> yes, but, but we all can, you know, uh, we are trying to keep it up. Thank you very much, sir. To hail, sir. Good evening to everyone. Thank you. Thank and you, sir. Welcome. Namaskar. Nice to see you again. Namaskar, Adabars. And I, uh, before I start a thing of beauty of kids, John Keats, I remember that it is not a fun after 50 years. Speaking or something reciting of English literature, poetry, because 50 years is not less part of life. And I just, uh, I got idea that 200 years before, 200 years ago, John Keats left the world. But he is still living among us through his so nice, heart-rending and loving poetry. Although he lived only very short, lived, short life, 26 years he lived only. And within 26 years, like John Milton, he left very nice impression on every English reader or English uh, attachment of the English, who, whosoever has attachment. They, because the poetry attachment is somewhat exclusive. So I start, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will, but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep, full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. He always appreciated the things around us natural. Therefore, on every morrow, are we raising a flowery band to bind us to the earth, spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching, yes, in spite of all. Some shape of beauty moves away the pall. From our dark spirits, such the sun, the moon, trees, old and young, sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep, and such are daffodils. With the green world they live in and clear rills. That for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season, the mid forest break, rich with a sprinkling of fair bust rose blooms. Here he just see, we see that how he has taken or he has seen the example as just we are seeing the movie before us. 
small rivers, daffodil flowers, sun, moon, everywhere he looks and he finds the beauty of nature. And such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead, all lovely tales that we have heard or read, and endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto the from the heaven's brink. So this is Keats poetry, a thing of beauty. Here, is it is it rightly going on, Mr. Tohel? Yes, 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 please. Okay. So I, uh, this was the poem by John Keats, which uh, impressed me very much. And I remember one thing, I should not miss that thing if I don't tell you that I am remembering the days spent few years back in uh, USA when I was called in a mushaira and that was invitation card of that mushaira so impressed and that was my one Muslim friend, he invited me and that the invitation card so nicely uh, painted or printed three in that was indo Park American mushaira. Tohel Saab? indo Park. Indo Park uh, America American Mushaira, and there was the picture on the invert invitation card. In the center, it was the Parcham, you know, flag, flag of America, and on the both sides, one side Pakistan flag and another side Indian flag. And I got some enthusiasm and inspiration from that invitation card. I, I prepared and I started to speak on that card to tell them the unity and coordination of all these three countries. Because those three parchams so much impressed me. This I wanted to tell that that was my first chance to speak in any mushaira. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you, sir. Thank nice you very to, much. Nice to hear you, Narendraji. And, uh, you know, once again, and uh, we hope we will keep on listening to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Over to uh, Zweb, sir. Okay. Over to Mr. Zweb. You are yes, mute. You Pardon? are mute, Zweb, sir. On the left bottom, you will find an unmute button. Okay. On the left bottom. Sorry, I got some inter internet problem. Okay, sir. Thank you. Off. Yes. Now yes. I'll come back to Mr. Khalik Haq, uh, Manzar Wajid. Is he here? Yes, yes, he is very much there. Yep, I am here. Yeah, please start. He says he his heart was filled with observation that touched him. His first was in 2019. He was inspired by Tufelji, who was his senior at Jamaya Milia Islamia, and held him as mentor and decided a Sahir Ludhianvi poem. He was awarded for some city museum on story writing. He's a B.Tech and lives in America. He will now recite a Keats problem when I have fears that I may cease to be. Yes, sir. You can start now, sir. Uh, th uh, thank you so much, uh, Dalal Saab, uh, for this nice introduction. It's, an, it's been a while since I, uh, uh, you know, I, it, uh, there was a gap of almost a month, I would say. So, uh, yeah, I, PNG yeah. was missing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was missing too. So, uh, the i mean it's an honor to be part of this program and to be honest i never heard about this poet before so i kind of tried to google and learn a bit more about him and uh, it's sad that such a great poet he lived only for 25 years and one thing i want to add that 
he was trained as a surgeon, but he, uh, his love of, uh, you know, towards the literature and poetry was, made him, you know, as known to the world. Uh, so <clears throat> he died, as we know that he died of tuberculosis and uh, he, he had a fear that he has so, uh, he has so much to write, but he, he, he knew that he's, he's going to die. So this, poet is, this, this, this poetry is about the fear that he, he had in his mind and he nicely uh, wrote this uh, as a sonnet. So the poetry is like this. When I have fears that I make his to be before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain before high piled books in character, hold like, hold like rich garners the full ripened grain when I behold upon the night starred face, huge cloudy symbols of high romance, and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance. And when I feel fair creature of an hour that I shall never look upon thee more, never have relish in fiery power, of unreflecting love then on the shore of the wide world i stand alone and of the wide world i stand alone and think the love and fame to nothing to nothingness do sink thank you so welcome sir very nicely said very nice very nice as you say that you have never heard about this point and that's the beauty of this program that's what we want to bring that we yeah, want yeah. people to read you know the yeah. legend and you yeah. know yeah. that shapes our thought thought process and that uh, you know enhances our writing yes yep. yes sir. Yeah. yeah so rightly said sir <laughs> now Away. I've been here. I've seen only three episodes of FPLG, but Mr. Anupam Pathak is a very well known face. <laughs> Pathak Saab, born in Delhi, hails from uh, Ghaziabad, district of Ghaziabad, schooling from Springdale, uh, Delhi, graduated from uh, Commerce, Delhi University, he retired this year. He has been associated with 32 companies and he still keeps tag of them and his creative itch was to write literature. His mother tongue is Hindi, but English fascinates him. So he plans to present perspective of John Cleats, Cleats the way he has been inter inter interpreted him. Red to autumn is what he will going to recite. Hiya sir, Patak sir. Good evening, Mr. Zweb, sir, and Thank Mr. Tafel and sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by the kind words you have uh, introduced me. <clears throat> yes, I was born and brought up in Delhi, but it is the it it goes to my father, who always took me to village and showed me what actually a village means, and I was introduced to literature in class eight as one of the subjects, but something fascinated me and caught my attention. And Keats was one of them. I was, as I came to know about Keats, I grew in fond of him that despite all his uh, infirmities, he was so positive in the world. And I'm not a very literature, literature person, but his beauty, it, it caught me his imagery, it caught me. And I think so, this particular poem, To Autumn, is very close to my heart because whenever I read it, I'm just trans transformed and I'm just transported to my village where my father used to take me in every summer holidays. So I present to you uh, To Autumn by John Keats. And the... <clears throat> 
uh, I begin. Seasons of mist and mellow fruit fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, to blend with apple the mossed cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more. Later frosts for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells. Who hath not seen thee off amid thy store? Sometimes whoever sees abroad may find thee sitting careless on the granary floor, thy hair soft lifted by winnowing winds, or on the half reap for furrow sound asleep, drowned with fume poppies, while thy hook spears next swath its twined flowers, and sometimes like gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook or by a cinder press with patient look. Thou watchest the last oozings hour by hour. Where are the songs of spring? I, where are they? They, not of them, think not of them. Thou hast thy music too, while barred clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plain with a rosy hue. Then in wailful choir, the, the, the small gnats move, mourn among the river swallows born aloft or sing, sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full grown lambs loud, loud beat from the hilly bone. Hedge crickets sing now with the tree treble soft the red breasted whistles from the garden croft and gathering swallows twittered in the sky. That ends my poem. I would like to end with the oft repeated uh, lines which uh, the poets have said, okay, have said, and that's what I have enjoyed in this, that it is really a thing of beauty and it is a joy forever for me. Whenever I will read, whenever I will read. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Mr. Shakil Nanwala. Actually, he told me that his uh, surname has been mispronounced. So we are sorry about it. And uh, Mr. Shakil, an architect from Ahmedabad, he likes to write Hindu poetry, started write, writing poet year back. He was inspired by PLG. Needs first as audience, then, then, then in recitals. His first PLG was P, P, PLG meet was 2019. Today he will recite the human season. Mr. Shakil, please, please uh, come up. Thank you, Gurdi. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. A very good evening to all. It's a pleasure to be amongst you all, dignitaries and uh, <clears throat> poetry lovers. Uh, as as Zoeb uh, said, I'll be reciting uh, the sonnet, The Human Seasons by John Keith. As we all heard uh, different poems, uh, mostly John Keats has written about nature. In this particular sonnet, he connects or draws a comparison between the four seasons of nature to the different uh, uh, human seasons, as he calls it. So it's like different stages in human life. I, uh, ironically, he lived only for 25 years, but uh, here in this poem, he has captured the, the entire lifespan of a human life, which is in itself is a commendable work. The poem presents the different stages of life rendered as the four seasons of the year. Instead of describing the physical nature of these stages, however, they are the seasons present in the mind of a man. 
that's how one would put it so i like to start this four seasons fill the measure of the year there are four seasons in the mind of a man he has his lusty spring when fancy clear takes in all beauty with an easy span he has his summer when luxuriously brings honeyed cud of youthful thought he loves to ruminate and when quiet cows his soul has in its autumn when his wings he furled close contented so to look on miss in idleness to let fair things on miss in idleness to let fair things pass by unheeded as a threshold brook he has his winter too of pale miss feature or else he would forego his mortal nature that's the very nicely done very nice very nice very nice very nice sir uh now while i will keep uh sherobanu ji for the last i'll call her a gate but i'll carry on with mr munawar rahman sir munawar rahman is working yes, as a lecturer a lecturer in the university of uh, the university of technical uh, technology and applied sciences at musanna oman i have been to musanna many times it was really wonderful great now nice. uh, she he was he was with uh, tufel ji as a junior as a tufel ji was senior in jamia milia and uh, his sports are amazing he plays everything and the best part is he does paragliding and since he he is on the today he is on terra firma as i say please start your please start your poem please you have not told you. me which you have not told me which poetry you are going to read but please yeah janab zeb sir thank you Thank you very much for good introduction you have given me and you, you am i uh, audible because i feel my yes, yes. internet is not yes it is not correct i we can hear you but the voice cuts off so i think you should check the internet you are not audible sir yes yes i can see it. I, my yeah, yeah. internet is not stable so My okay. internet is not a connection is not stable, so there may be some difficulty in hearing. Sir, carry on, sir. Carry on, sir. Okay, carry sir. On. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, good introduction you have given me, and very nice to know you had been here in Musanna before. Musanna, yes. No, no, yes. I was in Muscat, but I have visited visited Musanna once on okay. the, the company company work. Okay, good, great. So. Uh, okay so with due permission from from our chief guest uh, professor mustafa ahmed sahab however i cannot see his picture but i assume he may be present listening us uh, zaib sahab one thing i want to tell you that i have text you that i am going to recite the poem it's uh, yeah yeah i yeah yeah you tell you yeah, told me yes yeah i i, I <laughs> i have not and recorded once, it here uh, yes yeah once you rang me and asked yes, the yes. same question which poem i am going to recite today and Sorry. <laughs> then again i told you that this is the poem i have already filled in google sheet but uh, uh, no just it is one, no one. the google sheet was not accessible today we tried i and uh, shere banu ji both tried but there was some problem there so Okay, carry on with okay. your but, yeah. but okay sorry okay. about it but, sorry uh, sorry uh, but two days ago i have already sent you the topic uh, the poem that is one of our, our senior colleague uh, uh, mr narendra kumar chawla has already recited that poem uh, okay okay 
so to autumn hmm. the topic i had given you but okay no problem but uh, this uh, by this uh, meeting i i got an opportunity to know about john keats and uh, very truly speaking that before this i didn't know about him about john keats and i am listening various good information uh, from various people here and it increasing my knowledge about john keats so great person i came to know so something i would like to tell that i have searched from the google uh, a little over a year after this poem was published keats died of tuberculosis in rome comprising of three stanzas of 11 lines each the poem touches on a number of themes while praising the warm plenty full and lovely nature of the season there are several interpretation of the work including as a meditation on death and as an allegory of artistic creation to autumn is the most critically appreciated work of john keats it has been widely regarded as one of the most perfect short poem in in the english language among others english writer and critic critic algernon charles swinburne calls it the the nearest to absolute perfection of the keats ode while keats expert alan ward declared it its most perfect and untroubled poem so one part i will recite because uh, full poem uh, is recited by our senior friend narendra uh, narendra kumar chawla ji season of mists and mellow fullness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the wines that round the thatch heaps run to bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core to sell the god and plumes the hazel shell with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more latter flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never keep for summer has or brimmed their clammy cells okay thank you very much thank you That's thank it. you sir thank you thank you so much now uh, it's my turn uh, it's my turn so i'll since my excuse me uh john keats was born in uh sorry ah huh? sorry i can't find my page john keats lived for 26 26 years as everybody has been saying this i'll point out one thing in those days as we are have today There was a pandemic, a pandemic of tuberculosis, and believe me, in the medical annals, tuberculosis is still a scrooge, scrooge. So he died of tuberculosis very sadly, and uh, at the age of only twenty-six. And uh, what fascinated me is that I I love nature, I love. uh environment so i chose a very good poem it is known as grasshopper and cricket on grasshopper and cricket now grasshopper is not a very beautiful insect but we in school time we had what is known as uh, a nursery rhyme grasshopper green is a funny chap so here i start this poem on nature it is actually on nature what grasshopper can do the poetry of earth is never dead when all birds are faint with the hot sun 
and hide in cooling trees, a voice will run. From hedge to hedge, he keeps on hopping from hedge to hedge about the new mound made meadow. This is the grasshoppers. He takes the lead. In summer luxury, he has never done with his dial with his delights. For when he when for when tired out with fun, when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasure and weed. The poet of earth is seizing never. The poetry of earth is seizing never. The earth remains on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence from the stove that shills. The cricket song in warmth increasing ever and seems to and seems to one in drowsiness half lost. The grasshoppers among some grassy hills. So you know how the grasshopper jumps from one to other uh, grasses. I mean, in the meadows, and is very jumpy and very mischievous. So that is why this was my poem. Now I now the next next one on my list is to fail you. You are on my list. Ufelji, are you there? Uh, Zoeb bhai, hmm. salam. Ah, Tufel bhai good. had to leave for some urgent work. You please okay. take the next poet. Thank you. Ah, the, the next one. Hold my breath. Sh Sheru Banu ji, please come up. <laughs> Sheru Banu, where are you? Yes, salam alaikum Zoeb bhai. Ah, alaikum salam. Come on, carry on. What do you got? Yeah, good evening, Namaskar, Adab, Shashri Akal, all my poetic friends, all those present on the screen, our viewers, our listeners. I'm really glad to join after a long time. I've come to India on a trip and I've been really missing all past so many meets. But this meet, I couldn't help taking part. So I'm joining on a very short notice because I feel legendary programs are the source for me where I can learn at least something, though not being an avid reader, but this is a very good chance for me to learn whatever I can. And uh, everyone has, and Jodhubai, you are conducting the show very well. Thank and you. I think you are <laughs> up for today's show. It was your favorite poet, and I'm happy that you are uh, anchoring the show today. I'll, I'll tell you something about uh, uh, Shere Banuji. Way back, uh, maybe 20 years back, she was writing for uh, Oman newspaper that is uh, I, I don't remember the name. Is it Oman Times? Yes. Times of Oman, yeah. She used to write poetry then. So you can imagine what she can do today. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's just <laughs> oh, a couple nice. Yeah, yeah. She, she and, and Ali. Zubha has been a very a good family friend. I know him. She, she, so she, coming back to her poetry, uh -huh. uh, a thing of joy is a beauty forever. I yes. think the poet's words remain, though the poet has gone long ago. There were many poems to choose and I was really confused which one. And I think I have picked up the one which Mr. Khalik Wajidi has already said, but I shall read it again. This poem's name, when I feared that I may cease to be, written in 1818, but published much afterwards. Here the poet speaks about his fear, his anxiety, not fearing death, but he fears, what if I don't live long? How will I be able to express my poetic desires? my feelings, my thoughts, if I'm not able to write it on paper. And so this is a very short poem. Here I go. When I have fears that I may cease to be by John Keats. When I have fears that I may cease to be before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain. So here it's a very sensitive poem. And the poem says that the poet says, what if he's not able to fulfill his poetic abilities in, in the span of life? Yeah. Before high piled books in character, oh, character <laughs> yeah. in the library, holds like rich garners the fully ripened grain. 
Here he means to say all his thoughts, his ideas. He wants to pile them like how in a storehouse or a granary, grains are piled up. Third line goes, when I behold upon the night starred face, huge cloudy symbols of a high romance, and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance. So here, John Keats is seeing a symbol, an image of a love story of a romance. You know how we poets normally are? Whenever we look at things beautiful or nature around us, it really inspires us. So this is what is inspiring the poet, his thoughts. That what if he's not able to live that long, the symbols that he's seeing in the sky, will he be able to transform into poetic lines? And when I feel fair creature of an hour, then I shall never look upon thee more and have never relished the fiery power of unreflecting love. Here he says, he fears, if he doesn't live that long, he will not be able to admire the beauty of his beloved. Am I able, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And then goes the last line, the most powerful lines of this uh, short poem. Then on the shore of the wide world I stand, alone and think, till love and fame to nothingness do sink. He says that love and fame, everything is meaningless. One day, every soul shall taste death. And then that time, nothing is meaningless. So this is how this young poet sums up his thoughts about love and his feelings. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you very said. much. Thanks very for this. Very nice. Very nicely explained. Yeah. Thank you. Now, now we can, I can still call one reader who has not come that's the Arunima. She's a young girl. She's in 12th standard, still studying in school. And this is her final year. And she does uh, Madhuban and modern paintings. But uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find it. You, we couldn't find her. So anybody, any idea she's there, if she's around? So oh. bhai, I don't see her on the screen. So I don't see her name. Uh, so, OK, so now we. We, we give it, we, we give up. So she's not here. So what next do we do? The program is over. All the readers have read, including me. So what is next? We request the chief guest to say a few words. Yes. Okay. Mustafa Saab. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I am really honored to be called again. But I don't see Mr. Tufal Ahmad. Sir, Ji. Mr. Tufal Ahmad had to take care of some urgent work. So please turn on your video. We would like, like to listen to you. Okay. Okay, actually, I remember my past career at this glorious moment when I used to be the chief guest in literary programs in India, hardly most of the people would be absent at the time the chief guest would appear. This is the system there. So my work used to be very easy. When the chief guests are heard only by the persons who are responsible for the tent and the mics. But here, Mashallah, all the participants, except the, uh, what you call Mr. Tufail Ahmad, the pioneer, he is absent. He is a true Indian. Anyway. <laughs> he, is, he is still there, but not on the camera. <laughs> but not joining the chief guest. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway, we have uh, some lessons from the life of W. what you call Keats, that's very important to note. Keats was not, Keats had not joined institutions like the Oxford, Cambridge, or Aligarh, or Jamia, or Delhi. But still, <laughs> he is being taught and read after 200 years of his demise. It clearly shows that the institutions 
have a limited role to play in the what you call acquisition of skills so don't trust too much on the educational institutions rather try to improve your own talent that's very important to note nice another one. thing that mr kids died very young i pray all of us allah may give 100 years of life Ameen. because to please your wife and kids 100 years is not is a short duration but to be of some use to produce some things that will be remembered throughout the world for the <coughs> permanently only year and half or two years are enough it would be interesting to note that out of the 26 years duration that kids got in this world most of his famous poems have been penned down during three or four years it is not during the whole 26 years it was perhaps in 1918 to 18 uh, 1919 20 like within two or three years it means but nowadays i know most of the poets and poetess as well they have produced 50 60 40 books of prose poetry drama a jack of all trade busy for nothing but actually their literary value in the history of literature remains at no place so what i say that it is the quality that matters it is the quantity does never matter okay so john keats is not remembered by 10 or 50 or 60 books he has hardly written five or ten important poems that is being recited thought and uh, explained in different ways hundreds of writers have written hundreds of books explaining like this like that like this like that so be it the ode to nightingale or hyperion or indemian or some other odes so actually what is very important in poem that it is the intense feeling it is the intense feeling and it is the sensibility that matters too much in the field of art Corlel is a famous uh, what you call famous <coughs> writer of the modern world and he wrote that the world history what is world history it is the life history of great men so all the history that would be written or that has been written for the english literature the name of john keats would remain in uh, if he is not uh, his name is missing the literature of english language would not be completed so that's why you should trust on the quality not the quantity so far there was uh, some other poets as well shelley byron keats Wordsworth, all of them are discussed. Thanks to all of them, without them, our university syllabus would have been very easy. And those persons who don't pass the exam, they would have passed easily. But actually this man, 26 years old, John Keats, is similar in some ways to Wordsworth and to other romantic poets as well. But he is different in the matter that is intense feeling and the intense, what you call description of beauty. Actually, beauty is a word to be understood. I know one uh, a teacher in my college, for the five years, I have never seen coming him a minute late or he never left the office a meeting uh, from his classes a meeting before. So that's why this is the beauty in action. It is not the facial beauty, although in some of the poems, like uh, St. Agnes, uh, Eve on St. Agnes, he has put focus also, but there is limitation to the beauty that we have got or the human body, because all of us are, uh, according to the some other poet, elegy written in the country churchyard, Thomas Gray would say that, uh, what, he, what did he, all the, uh, the paths of glory lead to the grave. That's why our body will decay. This beauty is to decay.
but actually the art is permanent taj mahal is still there but taj mahal is still there but shah jahan and i think uh, for whom it was built mumtaz they are not here so certainly mumtaz was very close to the heart of shah jahan and that's why he built but this is the permanence of art that is the art of construction that is still remembered he is still one poet in aligarh muslim university his name is mejas he was from lucknow somewhere from lucknow i think rodoli rodoli is a place 10 to 15 kilometers so mejas is considered among one of the best lyricist kids produced tennyson and tennyson has produced other poets it is said about kids so he is from the same brand the urdu version of john kids he has written one beautiful poetic line that i would like to recite though the language is in urdu is anjuman e kafo masti mein is anjuman e is mahfil e kafo masti mein is anjuman e irfani mein sab jam bakaf baithe hi rahe hum pee bhi gaye chhalka bhi gaye Wow. So actually, wow. actually, wow. actually, John Keats. Actually, John Keats is uh, over head and ears in the contemporary poets because of the permanent, perma, because of the theory of permanence of art and the thing of beauty that is a joy for ever. So that's why we are uh, still waiting for a Keats to appear on the literary scenes till the time. let us say goodbye thank you all salam alaikum yeah thank you thank sir you. thank you doctor uh, uh, i would uh, i would like i would like uh, mr sethi to to say a few words to us about thank the you. poet thank you zohib dalal sir thank on you. behalf of our global president mr tufail ahmed uh, who had to leave uh, for some urgent work i'm just taking over for a short period of time at this uh, this is good time for uh, our magazine to be displayed i will request ms viba tiwari and ask dr uh, mustafa ahmed sahab to um, to honor us and uh, uh, with the magazine viba ji you can uh, go ahead and display the magazine thank you very much sir so here is the magazine and last week it was uh, the topic of poetry was senior it was senior citizen special so uh, all the poets were senior citizens and very good uh, environment was there and the cover pay, pay, uh, picture was designed by ankita baheti ji who stays in qatar and this uh, cover picture says the possibilities and the experience the knowledge uh, like we were discussing about john keats ke hamare buzurg jo hain unhone jo jo experience jo knowledge jo cheeze ikatthi karke rakhi hain to ye ek darwaza hai aur hame is darwaze ko kholna hai aur hame unse wo cheez hasil karni hai to darwaze ke us par experience hai aur is par jo hai वो ये छोटे पौधे हैं और छोटे छोटे पौधे हैं जो हरियाली को या नएपन को दर्शाते हैं और अंदर जो है वो नॉलेज और एक्सपीरियंस का खजाना है सो ब्यूटीफुल कवर पिक्चर डिजाइन बाय अंकिता बहेती जी एंड द रिपोर्ट इज रिटन बाय अनुपम रमेश किंगर जी and it has all the details of all our poets and all the poems uh, the poets were not uh, sticking to single topic they were they all were this, uh, explaining their uh, emotions so and this is the index and then comes the poems our um, honorable chief guest for last week was uh, mr naresh nas and then um, guest of honor was uh, mr vinay yeah. mohanta and then comes the poets and uh, anjali sharma ji was our anchor and then comes the next poets and their poems ghazals were there educational poems were there and emotional poems were there so this is the collection of all poems and uh, on the last page we have upcoming weeks programs list and topics list 
on which topic we are going to recite poems on each Saturday. And then comes the banner, the participants, the honorable guests and the guests of honors. Thank you very much, sir. I'm here, by, here I am uh, giving this, uh, submitting this, uh, my ebook in your hand, honorable chief guest, sir. Thank you. Very okay, nice to see the magazine. Sir. Very nice to see the magazine. And yeah. actually, it is being released when the legendary poet uh, Keats is in the discussion. So his two faces, one is the sorrow, other is the joyful. At one side of life, he explains the beauty or the sensibility, even the sensuousness. On the other side, he was on the verge of death, so disease. So these green plants that has been shown in the magazine. So I would like to remember this famous couplet of uh, Bashir Badre, the Khuda Kare, ke ye pauda sada hara hi lage, udasiyo mein bhi chehra khila khila hi lage. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Oh. I would request you again to comment on our program and guide us how we can make it better and how we can reach out to the maximum audience over the globe. If you can please give two more minutes of your time, we will really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Actually, nowadays, uh, I am a regular writer in uh, Shabufa magazine, Hyderabad. Ji. And in uh, Hyderabad, that is the humor magazine. I think the best in the world before my arrival. If it is uh, still best, it's my good luck. Because <laughs> most, of the, most of the great writer of humor, they have passed very recently. Like in Karachi, uh, Mushtaq uh, Ahmad Yusufi. And in India, Mustaba Hussain. They died, and now the field is open for the small writers like us. So in Hyderabad also, there is a literary forum, and its editor, who is my senior, and uh, I think that perhaps uh, he is a legend in the field of humorous writing. He has been editing the magazine for 53 years. So I have some. Uh, information and suggestions from him that I would pass on to you. So far, how to increase the liter what you call readership or what you call the participant. So participant, at least uh, in the program of literature, it, the, it is endless, I think. Just you have to contact any city, any town, and uh, you will not be free from them. The whole night and the whole day they would be waiting for their recitation number one. So actually, uh, I.A. Richards, he wrote a very famous line that popular taste is a vulgar taste. So generally, if you want a pure persons who have the interest and the high literary quality, then there would be cipher and uh, things would be difficult. So better you should compromise with the time and the trend when the people do not labor very hard and they have the desire, but they don't have the merit or the talent. So actually I am not aware of how the life is going in on Oman and other places, but I know about my city and about my area. If you can say, I can supply you with the readers and the participant, not one for one free, rather all free. So you can get it. And so far the, suggestions are concerned, then about the generally the English literary program, the readership or the participants would not be so much. Because generally every, even Allah Akbar used to say in Punjabi that I don't have the same taste in Urdu as I used to enjoy Punjabi. So it is the cultural contact of the language that is missing with the persons who are speaking in English or enjoying English literature. So naturally in a foreign and a lion language literature, try to get some native touch. 
try to be in contact with those people whose native language is english or who are the genuine writer along with uh, combining the other teachers or the tutors or the students of english so that the genuineness in the program would come i don't have any much to say about it thank you all thank, thank you very you. much thank uh, you sir thank you sir thank you yeah, mr mr Rao? Hmm. So, so it was a wonderful feedback from you and uh, we are going to implement implement it thank you so much thank you very much sir and at this time i would like to thank you mr zaheb dalal for um, carrying you, out thank you. this job thank of you, Hampshire, very beautifully and uh, this was a successful session it was my first believe me sir this was my first I first is it before <laughs> yeah for, as far as first were, are you uh, yes sorry tell me yes you are saying yeah. if it is your first one it was pretty good one yeah thank you sir <laughs> there are some sleeps always but anyway it was nice uh, i can sum up by saying this that all of the people all the all the readers were very wonderful and they did their job very well i thank them all now anupam ji you can come in now for a vote of thanks thank you thank you very much joy bhai Keith once said, "Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter." Sweeter, yeah. I think for me today, his heard melodies were very sweet, and I wish I could know what those unheard melodies would have been, which would have been even sweeter than these. Because for me, these were the epitome of beauty. If I may share with you. Uh, just four lines of one of his poems which really touched my heart about a person who died at the age of 25 the clarity that he had in when he says that i have been astonished that men could die my martyrs for their religion he says i have been astonished that men could die martyrs for their religion i have shuddered at it i could be martyred for my religion because love is my religion this beautiful poet religion. called john keats who in 25 years managed to give us a lifetime of literature was celebrated today at the very respected platform of poetry and literary group and it is my immense honor and pleasure that i have been asked to give the vote of thanks today so if i may start by thanking john keats wherever he is for these beautiful words of his which guide us even today followed by thanking the chief guest of today it was an honor dr mohammad mustaba ahmed to have you amongst us not just because of your literary taste not just because of your capabilities but also because of your honesty and your sincerity we all know that you are the head of the department of english language and translation at the al mehtab qasim university of the kingdom of saudi arabia we all knew that you are the author of three majestic books but we did not know the sincerity and honesty and the simplicity with which you were present here you heard us all throughout the program and the love with which the honesty with which you gave us your suggestions and you and the passion with which you spoke about keeps thank you once again dear sir it was an honor to have you i would also like to thank the anchor of the day zoeb dalal zoeb bhai who like the proverbial uh, star of bollywood is shining all over now he started three programs ago and he is shining all through zoeb ji who is an engineer by profession but an environmentalist by heart and today he took us all through the journey of love through the journey of kates with equal amounts of confidence and passion thank you very much zoeb dalal ji thank you ma'am thank, thank, thank you everybody thank you everybody for this program and uh, I, i really would enjoyed like it. to thank thank you thank you zoeb bhai i would like to thank uh, mr tufail ahmed who is the global president of this group for forming this group and for taking us through a journey of literary awareness 
through such beautiful programs. I would like to also thank the operations director, Simmi Kumariji, who works effortlessly, seamlessly, between the various aspects of running such a big organization with so many activities regularly. She is a jack of all trades and she is a master of all of them. She is doing it seamlessly. I would like to present my thanks to Amir Tofel Ahmed for the posters and the beautiful videos. I would like to thank the editorial team of Vibha Tiwari ji, Simme Kumari ji, Purnima ji, and Dr. Shalini ji for bringing up the weekly magazine week after week after week with absolute perfection and each time leaving us waiting for more, wondering what next they could do. I would like I to uh, thank Khalik Vajdi ji, Saad Vajdi, and Krishiv Kinger for the website. I would like to thank Sherebanu Akbiri ji, Kapil Batra ji, and Anupam for the weekly report that we bring to you about the programs. I would also like to offer my deepest gratitude to Ajay Gupta ji for one week, one poet program, which he has been doing tirelessly over the many, so many weeks. I would also like to thank Munawar Bhai for the wonderful e-certificates that we get every week, which kind of give us the sense of accomplishment. I would also I... like to thank the G. No, no, carry on. I would also like to thank the audience who are very supportive, who meet, meet us every Saturday for this program and every Sunday for Ek Mulakat Azim Shaksiyat Ke Saath. I would like to thank all the poets today who were here, who chose wonderful flowers from the garden of Keats and brought them to us in a wonderful bouquet of celebrating the legend. I hope I have not missed out on anyone. If I have, please do let me know. But before I wind up my thank you, there is just one thing I would like to still say. Yes, I did miss. I would like to thank all the regional presidents who have been very supportive of this program and who have been cooperating with Tufel Bhai and the Ed and the executive committee for bringing poets to this forum. And I would like to wind up by saying, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. So also this program on Keats will never pass into nothingness. It will always remain in our memories like a thing of beauty, which is a joy forever. Thank you very much to all of you for this wonderful program. Over to you, Zohar Bhai. Thank uh, you. My, I, I, I enjoyed doing this. And my parting words are, uh, Shimmi ji was a great help. Because I've been eating our brains since last eight days for, for various things. And she was tirelessly supporting me and answering me any every question. She Thank and, you so uh, much. Thank you so much. And I'm very sorry. मेरी बिल्डिंग में आज एक ये होने से पार्टी होने से मैं जल्दी जल्दी चली गई थी और अब वो फ्राइडे का नहीं करके सैटरडे कर दिया लोगों ने वो एक्चुअली फ्राइडे होने वाला था लेकिन सैटरडे कर दिया तो फिर मेरे को जाना पड़ा तो वेरी सॉरी मैं मैंने बोला अब मैं अभी पार्टी चल रही है लेकिन मैंने कहा नहीं मैं अभी जा रही हूं माय सक्सेस इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ यू थैंक यू सो मच नो यू आर यू आर वंडरफुल uh, and partly Sheru Banuji. She also answered so many questions to me. So I'm thankful for everybody. Hey, everybody take a good part and I really enjoyed it. This is my first, but it is not going to be my last. I'll come back again. Of course, of course. Definitely okay. not. We will not let you make it your last. So <laughs> bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Simijit, thank you for the opportunity. आपने बहुत अच्छा बोला थैंक यू सो मच आपको थैंक यू सो मच अब लाइव हो सिंस वी स्टिल हैव सम टाइम 
<clears throat> I would like to request uh, Shiri Banwak Briji to um, expand a little bit more on uh, the great poet, John Keats, who, who, who shows he is larger than life. At the mere age of 26, he wrote so many good poems. So Shiri Banwak please say a few words. Thank you so much, Satish ji. Um, just a bit of words that this poet really inspired me. me at his on, young uh, age, he has achieved so much. World, re world remembers him. And we as poets, we, we have made a long journey and yet we plan for a long yeah. journey. Will we acquire or will we be able to achieve the way these young, short-lived poets have been able to offer the world and what, uh, one more thing is always sensitive about John Keats when he died at the age of 25 as a young poet and we, when he saw his family uh, leave him, his mother, his brother. So this is all things are very inspiring about the poet, though I have not read him much, but whatever I have uh, read, uh, various poems of his I was going through, they were really inspiring and the various topics that he had touched and was young poet of romance. Uh, mostly it comes up as that, but he's able to write on other topics as well, on fears, on melancholy, on yeah. laziness, various topics that he has touched. And it's beautiful to take part in this program and learn more about the poet. And it's wonderful, um, Anupamji has uh, thrown so much light on the poet. And it's wonderful to hear how she sums up the uh, poet in such a short time. That's what I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shere Banuji. You never thank cease you. to appreciate everything. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, wow. Professor Saab, if uh, with your permission, should we end the live and then carry on with our conversation? Yeah, um, before we do that, let's pass it on to uh, Simiji, who is representing our beloved global president, Janab Tufail Ahmed Saab, to yes. say a few words on his behalf, whatever he would have said if he was here, and then uh, take us to the finishing line of this session today, so we can go uh, offline then we can continue and speak for a few more minutes among us. Thank you and over to you, Simiji. You're still- Simiji, you are mute. Thank you so much, Satishji, for giving me the opportunity. And it was wonderful program. And thank you so much, Zoeb Dalalji and all the poets. You were wonderful. And I was late, very sorry. Now, I think, uh, we have to close the Facebook live and then we can chat. And it, thank yes. you so much, yeah. all of you, for coming. So I now close the Facebook live. Thank you so much, Satish ji. Aapne mujhe ye kya? Very sorry, I'm late. I'm late.